Imagine if you went from feeling fine every day to feeling amazing. How would your life be different? Everyone has the ability to feel amazing again and again. You just need the right tools to get there. If you're ready to feel amazing, stick around. Now, here's the host of the I'm Not Fine Show with functional nutrition coach, Lizzie Enns. Welcome, everyone. We are here again for another amazing episode here. And I am so incredibly stoked for this show today because I am bringing a very dear friend and peer on this show today. And we're going to talk about a lot of amazing things here. Um, I am your host, Lizzie Yons, on the I'm Not Fine Joke. This is your first time listening here. Get ready for a right because we are going to dive deep into a lot of things today. Hashimoto's, thyroid, menopause, perimenopause, the hormones, all of the fun things or not so fun things when you're dealing with it. But if you are someone that is struggling and dealing with these types of things in your life and your body, then you're going to want to tune in, take notes and listen to what we are telling you and sharing with you. Because at the end of this show, towards the end of the show, we're also going to be sharing some tips and things actionable steps that you can start taking because that's what this show is about. We don't want to just give you information. We want to give you actionable steps to put into your life that you can get started with and make you not feel so lost. So today I'm going to be talking to my dear friend and peer, Julie Medesi, who is a certified holistic health practitioner, a master health coach, and a certified personal trainer. Very similar to like what I do, but Julie lives in Italy. So she's she's in Italy and sometimes we're jealous about this because we're like, we want to come to Italy and and, uh, stroll the vineyards and just hang out in the countryside. So one day we're going to make that happen. But Julie um, is on a mission to help women feel great in their bodies. Julie shows her clients how changing the way they think can change their physical bodies in remarkable ways by using small, simple daily practices that compound over time. So, so important. You can heal your relationship with your body and with food and find a way to create a healthy lifestyle that works for you. This resonates with me so, so much, which is why I wanted Julie to come on today because she's absolutely amazing and you guys are going to want to tune in and listen to what she has to say. So Julie, welcome to the show. Tell us about yourself. Thank you. I, uh, as thank you for that introduction. Um, as Lizzie said, I'm, a certified holistic health practitioner, master health coach, personal trainer, and menopause coaching specialist. And I primarily work with women who are going through the menopausal phase of life, but don't let that put you off because that actually can start as early as your thirties in premenopause and perimenopause and through the entire journey. There are a lot of, um, there's a lot of mystery surrounding this phase of our lives. And I'm happy to clear some of that up. Um, if we have time, I was born and raised in the U S and 10 years ago, moved to Italy for my husband's job before becoming a health coach. I spent 25 years in corporate HR. So I've lived on both sides of the fence. Um, when it comes to working entrepreneurship, living a very unhealthy and stressful life, making that, um, journey for myself through some difficult health struggles. So here we are today. Yes. I, uh, I've actually never heard one of the things that when we were talking before and I wanted to bring you on, we were talking about like, what do we want to share with the audience and what's going to like really, really resonate. And you brought up Hashimoto's and menopause. And I was like, that's it. Because the reality is, is so many women are going through menopause or perimenopause at a much earlier stage that than they should be. And on top of that, Hashimoto's, having that as you're going through that, I mean, I can't even imagine, um, especially if you don't know much about either one of those things, like that's just like a recipe for misery. So I want you to, to just kind of walk us through like what happened and what your experience was. And then I also want you to later on, I, I want to really dive into like, what were some of the most pivotal things that you did and learn through that as well? Sure. Well, I, 
I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's quite late. Um, I spent years um, working 70 hours a week and working out multiple times a day and thinking that I could just push myself harder and harder because exercise exercise gave me energy. And I completely burnt out. I was actually signed off of work for months. I went to a I went to a conventional doctor for years, probably five or six years over the course of five or six years. And I said to her, you know, I'm, I'm just, something's not right. I explained some of my symptoms and I backtracking a bit. I, I gained a passion for health and wellness when my mother was battling with cancer. I was 19 and she was 48 when she died. And wow. I, I'd always had an interest in health and wellness because she spent time with a naturopathic doctor who made a huge difference in her cancer journey. But anyway, in my 30s, I'd, I'd been going to see my doctor and she finally got so frustrated with me one day because I, I was giving her all these symptoms and I was doing a lot of my own reading and we didn't have so much internet available at that time. And I said, um, I think I have a problem with my thyroid. And she, she said, no, 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 you're, you're fine. And um, by the end of this six year period, she finally gave me a prescription for an ADD medication. I won't say the name and a, and a number of a psychiatrist. And I said, I don't have ADD. Why are you giving me this? And she said, because weight loss is one of your, or weight gain is one of your complaints. And this side effect of this medication is weight loss. And I think you should get in touch with the psychiatrist because this is all in your head. She refused to do the tests that I asked her to do to check my thyroid because she said it wasn't medically necessary. So I finally, you know, I'd put off because she accepted my insurance and, and I, I had put off going to anyone else because I didn't, I thought it was too expensive. And I realized at that point, I'm paying with my health. I'm paying with my life at this point. So I saved up the money and I went to see a holistic doctor who had been recommended to me. And there was a six month wait to get in to see him. Um, and I walked into his office and he said, what brings you here? And I said, I think I have a thyroid problem. And he said, Julie, I can tell by looking at you that you have a thyroid problem. And I was like, oh, hallelujah. So he, I, by that time, I was on seven different medications from my conventional doctor. Um, yeah, estrogen and asthma medications and allergy medications and, and feeling horrible. And I had this gray skin and my skin was dry and my hair was falling out and I had no energy and, you know, all these symptoms. And he took me off of everything, gave me some nutritional supplements and a naturally desiccated thyroid hormone. And within two days, my husband looked at me and said, you're different. I can see you in there again. I can see you in your eyes. You came, you're back. And Julie, from I, that, I just, I, I just have to like dive in here real quick. Like, yeah, I have like goosebumps over my entire body because I hear these stories so many times and women are crying to me. And one of the most important things that you just said in this entire conversation right now is that you are paying with your health. And, yes. and that is so true because a lot of times, like I've had this conversation with, with someone last week, actually, she's working with me now, but we were talking about insurance and you brought that up. You're like, I'm going to a conventional doctor because I have insurance. But at the end of the day, like you ended up on seven different medications, you're paying with your health. And at the end of the day, what was that insurance actually doing for you? It was making you sicker and yet you're paying for it. And it's like, at what yeah. point in time do we look at that and we go, this isn't really doing anything for me. Now, if you were able to get the help from the doctors that you need, that would be a different story. But this goes back yeah. to what I always say is like our entire medical system is broken. Completely. And that's why people are suffering the way that they are. And you and I work in this field and it is our job to teach educate and help people and understand that you can be your own advocate and when you go to when you do have to go to a doctor you have the information the most powerful thing that one of my clients has told me is she went to the doctor had her information 
told her what she was doing. And at first the doctor was like, you better be careful. This is just some person on Instagram. And then she tells her what she's learned, what she's been doing and how she's been feeling. And the doctor sits back and crosses her arms and goes, I see you've been educated. Yeah. Well, and, and like you said, not only do we need to be our own advocate, but I'm here to tell you, and I want whoever's listening, please write this down. You are the world expert in your body. No medical doctor can sit with you for the 12 minutes they get, if you're lucky, and be an expert in your body, your health history, how you feel, what your stress levels are, how you sleep, none of it. They don't know. They can only look at the external symptoms and the words that you tell them. And a lot of times we don't have time to tell them everything. So we, you know, we rush through it or we forget things. And that's why it's important to take your notes and be your advocate because you are the expert. Maybe they're the expert in medicine, but you are the expert in your body and never forget that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing too, is like, sometimes you do have to work with someone like you and I to get the information, proper education that you need so that you can feel confident to then be that expert. Because I think that we both agree, like we've gone through some hell things with our health before. And that is what allowed us to then go into the education that we did to then be able to help ourselves and other people. But sometimes you do need to invest in someone and in yourself and your, in your health to get the proper education versus all the noise that is out on social media. So you do need that education sometimes from someone. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not the expert of your body, but sometimes you need to be taught how to become that expert of your body. And how to listen and how to tune in. And I I didn't know. I mean, most of what we learn is ignore it, push through it, you know, no pain, no gain kind of thing and be strong, never let them see you cry, whatever. I mean, we have to be able to say, you know what, this something isn't right. And if something isn't right, if you think something isn't right, you feel like something isn't right, it's a pretty good chance that something isn't right. Yeah, it's very, very true. Yep. So what happened yeah. after that? Um, after that, it, it's been a journey and it's been another 16, 15, 16 years of this journey because with autoimmune, well, he, he took the blood, he did the blood test that I had asked for. Um, as a matter of fact, he took, um, 12 vials, my first visit and did lots of other tests. And, what he found was instead of 35, which TPO antibodies below 35 are no autoimmune issues, mine were 219. Wow. He said, you've had this for years. And so it was like, finally, I felt like I wasn't crazy anymore. I wasn't losing my mind anymore. Mm -hmm. So we did, we changed the way I ate. We changed, um, we, we used a lot of nutritional supplements. I was asking him about detoxing. He said, no, 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 no. When you're having health crisis, like you are, he said, we need to stoke the fires. We need to build you up yep. and then we can look at what needs to, to be taken away. Yep. So we focused on whole foods and we focused on taking away things that aggravate thyroid, like gluten and dairy and, um, and it, it was amazing the transformation I underwent without really changing a lot yeah. other than removing gluten and dairy. I didn't change a lot about what I ate at that point. And I just, I was a completely different person, Yeah. but we had to, we had to test frequently and retest to make sure that we yeah. could keep track of how things were going. Yeah. And that's the one thing that I, we're going to go to our first break here in a minute, but the one thing that I always I love that you brought that up as far as the detoxing. So that's something that I teach my clients. Like, listen, we cannot go into a detox right out of the gate. Like we first have to see where your body is at, where, what are your vitamins and minerals at? What's your immune system doing? What do we need to build up? What the foundation needs to get stronger before we can detox. Otherwise you're going to get really, really sick and we're going to cause exactly. more damage. Um, now mm. most people do need to detox something at some point. Um, but the body will also, if you just get your body to like poop every day, you're, you're already detoxing. 
So exactly. <laughs> So there are certain things. So we're gonna we're gonna like really dive into the meat of this when we come back because we gotta go to our first break. But I am just loving this conversation. And I already know that this conversation is gonna bless and help so many women already that are or have been in similar situations as you, Julie. So I just want to thank you for coming on because we just started and it's just gonna get better. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good, and that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com this is i'm not fine with lizzie ends to participate in the program join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com you can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live now back to the program all right welcome back everyone that's right i'm your host lizzie ends on the i'm not fine show on the Inspired Choices Network. Now, before we continue, if you are listening, whatever platform you're listening, whether it's Apple, whether it's the Inspired Choices Network app, uh, YouTube, Spotify, any platform that you're listening to, and if you are enjoying this show, like please go leave us a review. Let us know what your thoughts are. And also, just a reminder, I don't take anything less than five stars. So hit the five stars. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are, and then second, if you are someone that is in this place and you're just like desperate and you're like, I'm where Julie was, I cannot get anywhere with the help from my doctors and I'm spinning my wheels on this hamster wheel. That is what I do. And Julie, I want to talk a little bit about how you work with clients as well. But real quick, if you are someone and you resonate with, with my message and how I teach and what I teach my clients please know you can go book a, a consultation with me. The, the link, the calendar link is in my show notes. Go grab that link, book a consultation. Let's get you feeling better and let's get you in this place where you feel capable and self-sufficient and educated as well. Julie, I want you to share with them before we continue where people can find you and how you work with people before we continue on with what we were chatting about. Sure. Um, I have a number of different coaching programs. I also work one-on-one -on -one and I would love to guide people through. We do, we take people through very small steps to help them build their health from the inside out. A lot of times we have, a lot of women come to me for weight loss, but the truth is that weight issues are a, a symptom, not the actual problem. So we look at getting you healthy so that your body will get into balance. And there are a lot of different ways we do that through nutritional focus, through simple habits, through your mindset, through the way you move your body. Um, and I, I just love to watch people's women's transformations. I work primarily with women. I do work with men as well, but primarily I work with women. So you can find me you can send me a message at J-U-L-I at EvexiaHealth.com. That's E-V-E-X-I-A Health.com. Um, or you can visit my website, which is EvexiaHealth.com. So 
I love that. Yeah. And those, those links are going to be in the show notes as well. So um, are you primarily working with women that are potentially going through menopause or perimenopause? Right now? Yes. Um, okay. And, and again, that, that can start as early as your thirties. So it's yeah. a, it's a fairly wide, wide client group, but I, I find that the earlier on we can work together the, the easier that journey becomes. Because one of the things that I found, first of all, just talking about Hashimoto's and thyroid issues, the symptoms that you experience are varied and they can often be the same symptoms that you might, I should say some of the same symptoms that you might experience through pre or perimenopause or menopause yeah. um, itself. And it's one of the reasons why it becomes so difficult for doctors to understand what's really happening. The whole endocrine system is involved in both mm. of those situations. Yeah. yeah. But one thing I want to make extremely clear, thyroid issues, Hashimoto's, especially as an autoimmune disorder, is a health condition. Menopause is a life cycle. It is yeah. not a medical condition or a health problem, and it doesn't need to be treated or, or necessarily medicated. So it's one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have. And right now it's being treated as a, as a disease or a, or a health problem rather than a stage of life. Puberty is a stage of life, right? Wow. Adolescence is a stage of life. Yeah. Uh, childbearing years are, is a stage mm -hmm. of life. So, so menopause is a stage of life, not a health condition. That's so true. And I didn't even realize until you just said that how it's being treated as a medical condition, but it's not, it's, it's a life cycle. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's just like getting your monthly period. Like that's a cycle exactly. that happens. And we all know as women, like perimenopause and menopause is going to happen at some point. So treating it like a medical condition is just like ludicrous. Like, no, like yeah. what can we learn? How can, and, and this is what I teach my clients is like the more, the healthier you can get your body in your thirties, in your forties, the easier that menopause should become because exactly. it, and it's a natural thing that, that your body's going to go through. Absolutely. And it's interesting because of the hormone fluctuations through, if you have thyroid issues or as you're going through menopause, it can throw off a lot of your blood work numbers like cholesterol and mm -hmm. cholesterol is not the demon. We need cholesterol. Cholesterol mm -hmm. is good. When cholesterol numbers spike, it's usually because there's a problem somewhere in the body and it, your body is producing additional cholesterol to try to solve the problem. Yeah. Cholesterol in itself is not a problem. So usually it's, it's a hormone issue. Um, Chronic inflammation. It could be an, inflammation. It could be a number of different things, but if your cholesterol is spiking, my favorite quote from Dr. David Brownstein is a um, high cholesterol is not the result of a statin drug deficiency. It's the result of a, of a hormone imbalance or a, or a, a, an enzyme pathway disruption or, or something else in the body that's going on because it is a reactionary molecule. It's meant to help. So, so looking at these things and when you're, when your thyroid's off, it can also, uh, your endocrine system is really wise in the sense that when part of it isn't functioning properly, other parts of it will try to compensate yeah. and cover yeah. because when my thyroid, when we started treating my thyroid issues, my, the other parts of my endocrine system went, oh yeah, that's a, that's a technical term by the way. Um, and it, it just, it, it took us a lot of experimenting with different approaches and different, um, you know, different levels of, of thyroid um, hormone to, to be able to get to a point where things started to come back into a more e equilibrium. And I, I want to also say that we don't actually balance our hormones because there's no such thing, but we can get yeah. the hormone cycles functioning yeah. in a way that is is better balanced or more in equilibrium with what our body needs. Yeah. Um, I've said that yeah. before, actually, where, you know, hormone balance, it's kind of like become this overly redundant word. I'm seeing it just like I see it with so many other things that 
you know, something starts to grab on and then all, all of a sudden everybody's an expert or all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, yeah, you know, hormone imbalances. And I'm like, is it, and, and as I'm watching this, I'm going, yes, your hormones are not where they need to be, but there's, there's, there are other things going on. And sometimes it's yeah. really not as complicated as we like to think that it is. And so it goes back to that foundation. How, what is your foundation and what are you doing yeah. on a day-to-day basis to help that uh, foundation be strong and help healthy, the soil, what are you feeding the soil? And I started to, to realize like, is there ever even such a thing as, as balanced hormones? Like no. the body's always going to be working to bring things into homeostasis and stuff like that. Yes. But you're absolutely right. If one thing is off, it's going to try to pull from another area. It's just like personal training, the path of least yeah. resistance. The body likes right. to move through the path of least resistance. So if you have a shoulder injury on one side, the other side is going to try to compensate for the weakness in your left side because the right side is injured. But it's also going to try to take the path of least resistance and pull the muscles from other areas that it shouldn't even be pulling from. But it's going exactly. to do that because that's the easier route. Right. right. And then, and then when you start getting into the, what happens to your hormones. So as estrogen production starts to decline in our thirties, as early as our thirties, usually, unless there's a medical intervention, it might happen earlier. Um, but those, those levels will, will decline and fluctuate and our cycles might become more irregular we might have some strange symptoms that could mimic thyroid issues or they could mimic something else. A lot of times, like when I started getting hot flashes and I started getting them in my forties, pretty strong, they felt like anxiety attacks mm -hmm. to me. And the, one of the interesting things that I learned going through my menopause certification is that there are no standard menopause symptoms. No. Every woman experiences menopause differently, which is why it's so difficult for doctors to understand. And to, we sort of get brushed aside because a lot of the symptoms are vague or general and they don't sound like they mean anything. And when the doctors are looking at, okay, here's the symptom, what's the drug I treat it with? Because that's our medical model right now. Menopause doesn't have a treatment, yeah. right? So we have to look at what's underlying that. What is your body using to function on a daily basis? How are we supporting general health? And that will make a difference in how those menopause symptoms are experienced. Plus understanding what happens in your body during the menopause period will help you understand what's happening so that you can you can chart a path as to how to deal with it yeah. because we can't necessarily control our menopause symptoms, but we can certainly adjust the way we, we interact with them. We can adjust our lifestyle. We can adjust our nutrition. We can adjust a lot of different things to help us have a, have, have those symptoms have less of an impact on our daily yeah. life. It's so true. And I had, I actually um, had a client that I've been working with for quite some time with um, irregular periods, seeming like she may be going into menopause, but not at the age that she should be going into menopause. So we've been working together for a while. So like regular, not regular, regular, not regular. And we all know how that goes. Like it can give me really up and down, but I will tell you something. It wasn't until we really looked at what did, so we built her body up with the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrients, and she's sleeping way better, better than she has slept in 15 years. Her energy's way up. She's like, I didn't even know you can feel this good. So we got yeah. her to that place. And then we actually started her on a detox protocol for high candida levels and stuff like that. It was like, okay, now we're at that place where we can actually start yeah. getting rid of the things that, that are at an excess high, but she mm -hmm. was already in a place where the foundation and the soil were well mineralized. Right. They had the vitamins. Well, we started her on this um, candida cleanse to help get rid of, get her candida levels down and her period started to regulate. 
she started to get her periods on a regular basis again. And I was like, I mean, we're just like celebrating big time because we're just like, (laughs) oh my gosh, like this is, this is so amazing. But interestingly enough, her sister and her mom went through menopause way early, like full on Mm. menopause in their forties. And she's like, I really don't want to, like, if I can prevent that, I don't want to go through it that early on. And it's looking really, really good right now. So anyway, just had to share that because sometimes there are exact things like that, that are actually the underlying root issues of why things are as off as they are. And that's why it's so important to do the proper testing, get the right information, look at what is really going on on a very deep internal level. That's why I love working with Melitza because it gives feedback like that. And then you work on that. And sometimes you'll just have these massive results come from that. So anyway, we got to go to our next break here. Um, But guys, don't go anywhere because this is still so, so good. And we have a whole lot more. Actually, we need like two hours, but we only have an hour. So we're going to give you guys as much as we possibly can. When we come back, Julie, I want you to dive into what that process was like for you with, I I do want to touch on how did you get through the menopause with the Hashimoto. So I want you to dive into that when we come back. So sure. guys, don't go any bit anywhere. We'll be right back. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I'm not going to waste any time here because I want to really, really dive into this subject, Julie. So we're going to get right into it. Take us through what you did when you were going through that season of menopause and dealing with Hashimoto's. Right. So when I, I got to Italy three months before my 50th birthday wow. and I had, I arrived on December 21st of 2013 on January 20th. I started my very last cycle ever. And that was it. It was like somebody literally flipped a switch and One of the things I want to say is, first of all, that isn't necessarily normal, (laughs) but I was, I was lucky in the sense, but there is no test for menopause. Menopause is actually one day. Yep. It is, it is the 365th day without a cycle. And after on day 366, you are post menopause. That's it. And post menopause lasts until the end of your life. So you never really finish that and you never really know how long those, that cycle and those symptoms are going to continue on, but you can affect it. So I say that because one of the big side effects, of course, of Hashimoto's is brain fog. And one of the big 
um, symptoms of menopause is brain fog. So you can imagine <laughs> where yeah, I double was. Whammy. <laughs> double whammy. And, and I, I was just coming, still coming down off of really stress from, from all of the, the work and the change of country and learning a new language and international bureaucracy and all of those things. And, and it hit me. And I remember very vividly being at a, a dinner in the, in the mountains. And it was, we were at thousands of, I don't know, 15,000 feet or 12,000 feet of elevation, something like that in the Alps. And uh, we were having dinner and all of a sudden I felt this heat rising. And then I started to feel really, really anxious and I was pouring sweat and I jumped up from the table and I ran outside and I started stripping my clothes off. <laughs> And I, I got down to a camisole top, like I was possessed and I got down to a camisole top and some of the other women came out and said, honey, I know exactly what's going on. I'm like, I don't, what's happening to me. That was my first sign other than not having a cycle. That was my first sign that really I was in menopause. So I decided that my, uh, my hot flashes alone were solely responsible for global warming. So I apologize. But you know, the, the, once once I understood that's what was happening, I realized that I needed to do something. And so I hired a health coach because I didn't, I had a, a an Italian doctor, but again, this is just part of life. There isn't much we can do for you, you know, and I had already started eating better at that point. But I start. I was started working with a health coach, and we weren't specifically focused on menopause at that point or thyroid. But I knew how, I knew what to do to manage thyroid, which was to eat good, good uh, lean protein, lots of vegetables, regular movement, get as quality sleep as you can, stay hydrated, all of those things. And so through my health coaching journey, we really dialed those things in. And I, I reduced a lot of my starch intake, um, at that point because my body wasn't responding well to them. I got really bloated and felt very inflamed, um, whenever I had starchy, starchy carbohydrates. So I found over the course of that year of working with my health coach that a, a more paleo style diet, I don't like to adhere to a, a, yeah. a diet style per se, but but something more resembling a paleo approach to, to eating helped me immensely. Like it really minimized a lot of the symptoms and then finding that sticking to those things pretty, pretty close, pretty, I don't want to say strict, but fairly, yeah. fairly strictly um, was what made all of the difference. And then of course, the regular exercise and strength training, that was a huge turning point for me. Until I started strength training, I was doing a lot of walking, I was doing some running, and I never really felt as mobile and as strong. And I live with chronic pain as well. That started in my 20s after a medical intervention I had. So so I found that when I started strength training three days a week in earnest, my pain levels were better, my mobility was better, my muscle tone was better, I lost weight without actually trying very hard. Um, you know, all of those things kind of came into line. So I really, um, yeah, I want to emphasize the strength training too, because that's something that I, <clears throat> I teach my clients is like, when, if you are someone that hasn't done any kind of strength training and you're mo mostly done, like, uh, I mean, m most everybody that comes to me is not like, Hey, they're not like looking to build a six pack or anything like that. Like they're looking right. at, like, I want to heal my body and I, I want long-term health. But yeah. with that, with, um, I am a firm believer in order to support your bone health, your skeletal, your uh, muscle health, your muscle skeletal health, and your hormones and all of those things. Um, I am a firm believer that strength training is part of, should be part of that protocol. And here's why, you know, menopause, osteopenia, osteoporosis, hormone changes, like all of those things. And so Strength training is just something that can really, really benefit in the support of that. So the sooner you can get on a regimen, if you're not doing any kind of like lifting strength training and you're like, I'm just doing cardio and walking, like I'm telling you right now, like strength training, as much as you might hate it, it will change your life. 
in many, Absolutely. many ways. Absolutely. And, and excess cardio can actually cause muscle wasting. Mm. So, and, and the, I'm glad you brought that up because as we go into menopause, we lose the protective effects of estrogen. And once our, once our bodies, once our ovaries stop producing estrogen, we are programmed to store more belly fat because that's where a type of estrogen called estrone gets stored. And that's what feeds our estrogen needs as, as we get older. It doesn't mean you have to have a big saggy pot belly, but it does mean that your body's going to preferentially store belly fat there. And it's, it's okay. We're, our body shape is going to change, but that strength training is going to be essential to protect your bones from the from the bone loss that comes with the loss of estrogen. And it also means that when you look at how do you want to function on a daily basis as you age, the amount of muscle loss we get after we start into menopause is significant yeah. and it continues to decline. And so without, and we don't, you don't have to pump iron like Arnold Schwarzenegger or whoever the bodybuilder no. figure is these days. I'm dating myself, but we really don't. And you can do a lot of resistance training with body weight or bands. You don't necessarily have to lift heavy. Even Pilates. But even Pilates, exactly. Doing yeah. doing something that's going to strengthen your muscles is essential for daily function. To be able to open jars and carry your own groceries and walk up and down the steps. And the more you strength train, the less likely you are, because you learn balance and coordination and mobility and flexibility, the less likely you are to have a bad fall or have the effects of a bad fall. And so if you do fall, you have the muscular strength to recover better and you're less likely to in, endure a fracture yeah. or a serious fracture yeah. at that because we, you know, we get older. I used to, I used to be a competitive figure skater and I used to do gymnastics and the balance beam was my thing. So I used to have tremendous balance. And now, even though I'm very active and even though I strength train, I still once in a while, I lose my balance. It's part of that aging process because our bodies are different now. Yep. They've changed. They need different things. We need to eat differently. We need to move differently. We need to think differently about self-care. Yeah. What we did in our 20s is not what we should be doing in our 40s because our body has no. changed. I wanted to ask you a question. So I noticed, I, I noticed something in myself. So I'm 38. And, and so I have, you know, about a year and a half before I turn 40. And um, I noticed in this past year, I noticed something shift. And like, I've, I, I'm i just going to put this out there. I've never had big boobs. Never wanted big boobs. Never had big boobs. In the last year, I'm like, what is going on? Like, like my, my shirts were getting tight. I could tell like I, my boobs were getting bigger. And I'm like, I don't need this. Like, what is, what's happening here? So I started to assess like what I was doing differently. Like what it, what did I change? And I have fallen in love with whiskey. Uh -huh. And I, I, uh, for like the last probably nine months or so, you know, I, I didn't over, like, I'm not a heavy drinker as far as like, oh, let me go drink and like get drunk or anything like that. But I sure. love the ambiance behind whiskey. I love the taste of really, really good whiskey. I just really enjoy it. And I was enjoying I know it. You come to Italy, we're going to drink some. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And, and so, so I was like, I think that's what it is. Cause I was having it more consistently than what I have been drinking, like the two, three years leading up to that in this last year. So I was like, I went through the holidays and two weeks ago, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like go completely dry for a while and let me just watch and see what happens. And I'm, I'm telling you, Julie, like within a week, I was like, it already shifted. It already changed. I noticed less inflammation in my body. I noticed that my boobs actually started shrinking again. Um, like lower belly fat area where, where belly fat likes to hang out. Um, I noticed yeah. that was going on and I was like, you dang whiskey. Um, but I did do my lab work and I noticed a change in my estrogen levels. Yeah. When, so I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. 
Um, do you want to talk about that now or after the break? We're gonna we're gonna go to a break and then we're gonna talk about that. We don't, actually don't have much time, but I feel like that's <laughs> such, such an interesting thing. But we do have to go go to our our next break here. Um, but when we come back, I really want you to um, just take a couple minutes and talk about that and and give your feedback on sure. that because I'm really curious. And then I do want to end the show with what would you what are five things that you would give someone to uh, start doing on a daily basis to help change your life around. So we'll be right back, guys. I'm your host, Lucianne, on the I'm Not Fine show on the Inspired Choices Network. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good, and that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. We are about to finish this show out here, uh, but we're going to pick it right back up where we left off. So Julie, you know what my question was? Tell me what your thoughts are on that. As you're, as you're nearing 40, your estrogen levels are naturally changing. One of the things that has a huge impact on that part of our bodies is alcohol. And alcohol affects our blood sugar, which affects our insulin levels. And it's that whole hormone harmony thing that we're, that we're trying to get back to. So alcohol does make a big difference and it will, because they are Um, even if you don't drink that much, it can, it affects everybody differently. And I find the same thing when I am drinking more because I live in Italy, we drink wine. Right. And um, I do find that I bloat, my belly gets bigger. Unfortunately, I don't have the same thing with my boobs, but (laughs) it's okay. I don't want that Um, problem. (laughs) No, (laughs) Uh, but it, but it, alcohol is one of the the biggest triggers for women who are starting to go into that premenopause and perimenopause stage. Alcohol, sugar, um, is another one, and the kinds of starches that that you take in. Now I know you eat a, a healthy diet, so that isn't such a such a thing for you. But we don't have to give up our cocktails, definitely not. But we do need to be more mindful of when we drink, how much we drink. One of the things I appreciate about I appreciate about Italy is that we, you never have alcohol without food. So usually if you can have a light protein snack and pace yourself, sip slowly and enjoy, um, you can enjoy a, a glass or two of something without having a major effect. But try to limit it because especially in women, it not only exacerbates some of those symptoms and some of those physical effects, but it also makes you more likely to head towards some of the health issues that we're trying to avoid yep. once estrogen isn't there to protect us as much anymore, which is heart disease and stroke and cancer and, um, you know, some of the other things. So, yeah, I noticed, I noticed that, um, in my labs when I did that, when I did my labs and then I noticed, um, my liver had, my liver enzymes had changed as well. And so I was like, all right, Lizzie, like, and we know like liver connected to the thyroid, to the cholesterol, like all of those things and inflammation too. Yeah. So I think that that goes back to that pendulum in wellness is like really tuning into like what is affecting your body. And that's different mm-hmm. for me than it is for you and, sure. and what is working for you. So I want to go into this, these next few minutes to for you to share what are some things that you would tell people to start doing if they're in the place or similar place that you were going through those? Sure. Well, I mean, all autoimmune stems from the gut. 
So making sure that we we take care of our gut. If you're not in in one of the things with with both menopause and thyroid Hashimoto's certainly, but also other thyroid issues is constipation. Mm -hmm. And so if you are not eliminating regularly, have a look at what are you eating? How much water are you taking in? What's your fiber like? And make sure you look after your gut probiotics. If you need them, work with a health professional to make sure you're not just taking stuff for the sake of it, but, but definitely look after your gut whole foods as much as possible. Um, try to stay away from starches and things that cause inflammation. Those were protein for me was the biggest change and that had the biggest impact. I always ate a lot of vegetables, so that wasn't a problem for me, but I always look protein and vegetables first. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the rest of it after that and strength training, Yep, got a strength train and you have to protect your sleep. Yep. And, and so, so gut protein, um, strength training and sleep and hydration. Those yeah. to me are kind of the, the, I won't say magic, but when you can get those things working well, you're far more likely to see better benefits, better results and fewer symptoms. Yeah. But again, experiment, be curious because your experience is going to be different than my experience, than anybody else's experience. And you may notice symptoms that seem really strange. Did you know that itching is a is a symptom of menopause? I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. That's a change in the body. That's really, really interesting. I'll watch out yeah. for itching. <laughs> <laughs> it's not super common, but you know, a lot of these things that we may think are random aren't. Yeah. And the thing is, the, the one thing that I want to point out too, I love those things that you share because it's so true. Now I do know that even knowing like what to do for the gut, it can, that can be so different for everybody too. Cause if someone has sure. SIBO or H pylori or IBS, like it's different. But one of the things that I, I just want to share here, I did a post yesterday about using um, onions for mm -hmm. uh, when your kiddo is sick, when you're sick and you know, you're just like cutting it up and whatever. Well, I have hundreds and thousands of people across all platforms that are like, this works, like they've used it, blah, blah, blah. And then I have to select few people that are coming in and arguing about the fact that it's only placebo, science doesn't support it, research doesn't support it. And, and someone asked me, she's like, the evidence doesn't show that, that it helps with a cold, like a cold virus, because an onion has antibacterial properties, actually pretty high. And so they're putting antibacterial and virus and going, doesn't work. And I'm going, and so she's like, well, evidence doesn't show that. It, and I said, listen, the only evidence that you need is if you try it and it works or it doesn't work, you'll know whether or not it works for you. Just because the evidence on the internet or wherever says it doesn't work, doesn't mean it can't work for you. And I appreciate that science needs a, yeah, conditions, certain conditions to be able to repeat. But the truth is we don't live in a lab. Mm -mm. And so a lot of the science behind these things is based on sterile environments yep. with test tubes or Petri dishes, and it has nothing to do with the human environment. So it doesn't know about emotions and stress and, and animals Medic. and dust and the environment you live in and the cosmetic products you put on your body and everything yeah. else that yeah. has, that, that makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to, to uh, throw that in there. I, as we're ending the show today, because the, the reality is, is we can get so caught up in the how when sometimes we don't even need to know the how we just need to know that it works a perfect example yeah. is someone someone sent me a picture um of um eating sweet potato and chicken and something else at night and they're like and i woke up the next and they're kind of scared of eating carbs and they woke up the next day like three pounds lighter and they're like how'd that happen and i said it doesn't matter how it happened the fact is it happened and it, it worked. happened so like you don't need to know and overcomplicate it just know what works doesn't need, doesn't matter how. So that's something that just always keep that in mind. So anyway, 
Uh, Julie, I just want to thank you so much. We needed a whole other hour. I'll have you back another time, but thank you so, so much. Guys, thank you. go check her out. Check out her links, her websites. Thank you guys for hanging out. We'll be back next week with another powerful episode. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the I'm Not Fine Show. Lizzie Ends returns Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, have the best week of your life by making choices that take you from feeling fine to feeling amazing.